the relentless Egyptian sun beat down on Omar's back, turning his already sweat-dampened tunic into a clinging second skin. He squinted across the vast expanse of golden fields, the endless rows of wheat shimmering in the heat haze. Today, the rhythmic scrape of his hoe against the dry earth felt more like a punishment than a livelihood. Poverty was a constant companion in Omar's life, a relentless shadow clinging to his every step. His small, mud brick house on the outskirts of the village, nestled beside the life-giving Nile River, offered little comfort. It was a single room that housed his entire life a worn sleeping mat, a chipped clay pot for cooking, and a gnawing emptiness in his stomach most evenings. Omar wasn't always this way. He remembered a younger, more carefree version of himself, chasing his friends through the dusty village streets, their laughter echoing off the sun-baked walls. But those carefree days were long gone, replaced by the harsh realities of adulthood. Work was scarce, and when it was available, it was backbreaking and poorly paid. Today, as he toiled under the relentless sun, a seed of discontent began to sprout in his heart. There has to be more to life than this, he muttered wiping a bead of sweat from his brow. His gaze drifted towards the majestic Nile, its cool blue waters a stark contrast to the parched fields. He'd often heard tales of Cairo, the bustling metropolis nestled further north along the river's path. Travelers spoke of towering buildings that scraped the sky, bustling markets overflowing with exotic goods, and wealthy merchants who lived in unimaginable luxury. In Omar's mind, Cairo became a symbol of everything his life wasn't a place of abundance and opportunity. As dusk painted the sky in hues of orange and purple, Omar returned home, his steps heavier than usual. The meager lentil stew simmering on the small clay stove barely managed to fill the emptiness in his stomach. But tonight, a different kind of hunger gnawed at him a hunger for a better life. He sat on his mat, staring into the dancing flames of the oil lamp, his mind swirling with visions of a different future. The next morning, Omar awoke with a newfound resolve. He wouldn't spend his life bent over in fields, his back aching and his dreams withering. Cairo, with its promise of wealth, seemed to beckon him. But how would he get there, a penniless farmer with nothing but a calloused hand and a desperate dream? As fate would have it, the answer came knocking on his door in the form of Malik, a childhood friend. Omar hadn't seen Malik in years, but a warm smile instantly brought back countless memories of shared adventures and laughter under the endless Egyptian sky. After catching up over a cup of weak, bitter coffee, Malik noticed the glint of determination in Omar's eyes. What troubles you, my friend? Malik asked, his voice gentle. Omar poured out his heart, his yearning for a better life, his dream of escaping the shackles of poverty that bound him. Malik listened intently, nodding in understanding. Cairo is a city of dreams, Omar, Malik said finally but dreams require more than just wishing. They need a plan, a seed you can nurture into reality. Omar perked up. A plan. That was what he needed. 
Malik, sensing his friend's eagerness, shared his own idea. Fatima, he began, mentioning the name of a woman known throughout the village for her prized chickens, has a surplus of eggs. The finest in the land, I assure you. We could buy a few hundred from her, enough to fill a whole basket, and then journey to Cairo. You could sell them at a hefty profit in the bustling market there. With the money you earn, you can then start your own business, perhaps a small shop. Omar's heart soared. This was his chance, a chance to build the life he always dreamt of. He readily agreed to Malik's plan, and the two friends spent the rest of the day negotiating with Fatima. After much haggling, they managed to secure a basket overflowing with 200 plump, white eggs, the symbol of their shared dream. The following morning, with the Nile shimmering like a ribbon of liquid gold under the nascent sun, they set off for the bustling port on the outskirts of the village. The journey to Cairo was long and arduous. They squeezed onto a crowded boat, the air thick with the smell of sweat and spices. The other passengers, a motley crew of merchants, travelers, and even a group of chattering monkeys, provided constant entertainment. Omar, however, was oblivious to the sights and sounds around him. His mind was consumed with visions of his future life in Cairo, a spacious house with a cool, shaded courtyard, a table always laden with a feast, and perhaps even, 